As Marathon's drop was news-based, it kind of messed up our entire case for now. However, that could very well just be a temporary disruption, and for that reason we need to give it a week or two to stabilize again. For had this bad news not been delivered on Monday, we'd 100% be trading at higher levels at this very moment, likely in the 60s. In this episode, we're gonna look elsewhere at some very interesting technicals, an entire orchestra in which the technicals come beautifully together. For this is what we do, we don't just do TA, we build cases. In this sense, one case can consist of 50 sub-technicals, and as the technical map evolves, things are gradually deducted and added onto it. And this makes us more potent to sweep with emotion rather than start afresh every day. However, Marathon's freak plunge and all the implications it had in the Marathon versus Bitcoin chart sure made things difficult for us in the short run. This was the type of event that temporarily nullified half of our baseline. But what we do is to get back on the horse and search for new clues and that's precisely what I've done and that's precisely what I've identified and in this episode we're gonna compare Bitcoin's technicals to some of the alts for more often than not they all come together in the most beautiful and perfect ways ways that look almost designed and predispositioned when looked upon in the aftermath in this sense we have the good fortune to be able to front run these technicals and to lay the puzzle in advance by doing the hard work ourselves but before getting into the technicals, do note that nothing of what I say constitutes financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And if you like this episode and this new format that I've just started, then please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And even more importantly, share this episode with others who may benefit from hearing it too. Let's kick it off with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, as we speak, looking incredibly interesting. It's struggling to keep up with this key horizontal support zone and is also battling the EMA50 on the daily. And if this were to break, we can safely conclude that Bitcoin's gonna go down and test the support of this ascending channel. And in this sense, Bitcoin doesn't really have far to go to test this zone. We're talking roughly 8 to 10% depending on when it were to happen. But given how Bitcoin has been hovering around sideways for about a month, I don't expect it to wait around for too long, because this here has built up some technical pressure. Now, there are many reasons why this technical area right here is of prime importance to us. First of all, a bounce here would be very bullish, as it would confirm the bullish momentum within this channel. And secondly, just like in this case, which constitutes both a time-based correction and a price-based correction, we could be seeing something similar here as well. And if the price were to recover, we would be in for a mini version of a time-based and price-based correction again. And this on its own would then pent up new pressure to be released on the upside. But not only that, so would this one. And in this sense, whatever's been brewing within could be the rocket fuel needed to take us to those six-figure bitcoins. But with that said, the dangers are by no stretch over with, because if Bitcoin were not to be able to hold up this level, which also would coincide roughly with the EMA 200 on the daily, then things would not look good at all. The next thing in line that we'll keep a close eye on is the lower bullish red line on the daily chart. If Bitcoin will be able to close on this line either today or tomorrow and equally hold up the EMA50 and this horizontal support zone, then that could be a strength infusion now that everyone is expecting Bitcoin to go down. And if that were to occur, I will seriously consider re-entering my marathon position again. And as you already know, if you follow long life trading on Twitter or on Algier, I did sell off half of my marathon position at around $56 the other day. And now could be the time if this, in combination with this, were to hold up. With that said, I don't really think this will come through. However, we're not here to predict, we're here to react. Now let's move on to the real reasons of this episode. This chart is the weekly chart on Ethereum. And as you can see, we have a long and steady diagonal primary trend line. And this one stretches all the way back since last year's Corona bottom. 
as you can see, this line has been incredibly strong and reliable thus far. And we don't have compelling reason yet to assume that this will be the time that it breaks. For odds wise, it will be support every time until it no longer is. And as we don't know when or if it will break through, we just have to play the odds that it's gonna continue moving upwards. With that said, there are a few technical warning signs that do speak against a trend line bounce. And the main one behind that is that Ethereum currently is forming a rising wedge. And this rising wedge is in turn technically confirmed by the steadily declining trading volumes. With that said, when things are inherently bullish in crypto land, rising wedges actually tend to break out on the upside. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen this time, so we just need to proceed with caution. Now, this is where things become interesting. If we measure Ethereum's current level and down to the primary trend line, we can see that it's roughly 6 to 7% down. And what then do we have in Bitcoin before we reach the floor of this ascending channel? Well, it's roughly the same, depending on when it were to happen. If this were to happen by next week, we're talking a 6% decline. If it were to happen by tomorrow, we're talking a 10% decline. In this sense, if one of them were to reach their support, you can bet the farm the other one is gonna do the same. And if Ethereum were to go down to test its primary support line, we could potentially see a lower bullish red closing on the daily as well. But just like in Bitcoin where we stand to potentially close on the lower bullish red if only we can hold up this key support zone and the EMA50 on the daily, we might in fact get the very same thing in Ethereum as well if it manages to stay above roughly this level right here. But why then is that you might ask? The lower bullish red line is 2.5 RSI points below its present level. Well, to anyone who's watched the RSI trilogy and who indulges and uses those strategies, listen carefully because I'm gonna let you into a little golden nugget. And this is some deep level stuff that hasn't yet been presented to the public and which would constitute the material for a possible fourth episode. The thing is this, there's always one lower bullish red and one upper bearish blue line that are the most correct ones. Those are the ones we try to identify when we apply these strategies. Sometimes there are more than one line that are correct. The typical case is that these lines cluster together at a certain critical point. The typical fashion is that those levels cluster together in the same area, which is the reason why we apply a 1% safety margin in either direction. This means that if the lower bullish red line is set at 40, it's still technically valid as long as it's within 39.60 and 40.40. .40. But sometimes those lines or confluence areas don't match, and that's what we have in Ethereum as well. We actually have two lower bullish red RSI lines on the daily chart. One is set at 37.25 and the other one is at 42.35. And this is exactly what I mean if Ethereum were to close above a certain level because then we might get a lower bullish red touch on the daily as well. And don't be surprised if this were to perfectly match with that of Bitcoin as in our getting two signals simultaneously. Let's now move on to Marathon, to which the same diagonal trend line support applies. We are, as we speak, testing this very line as support on the weekly. And as we can see, this has acted as support on several occasions already throughout this trend. And just like in Ethereum, a break below this would be no good news at all. My only concern here is what will happen if Marathon were to break this primary trend line. And if this were to happen in Marathon, we can safely assume it's gonna happen across the board in crypto land. Ethereum will break through and Bitcoin won't hold up this support cluster. So as you can see, this support zone is of immense weight as it confluences with other technicals across the board. With that said, a break below this trend line doesn't necessarily mean it's a bear market ahead. It could equally mean we're in for some consolidation before being ready to proceed higher. But given how long we have consolidated already, I don't think a break would lead to something like this. No, in the case of a break, those 22 to $25,000 Bitcoins are more likely than ever. 
Now, given that Marathon is basically testing this line already, the best case scenario would be for Bitcoin to reach its channel support over the weekend, upon which it can then bounce right back up again before the US market opens on Monday. For in such case, Marathon can technically manage to stay beyond this critical line at which it's still gotten a tiny bit of leeway on the downside.